Hi, I'm Carolyn Crandall with the TiVo Networks. I am the Chief Deception Officer, and I am here today with Lance Spitzner as our special guest on our Behind the Mask series. And with that, Lance, can you give our community a little intro? Sure. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Lance Spitzner. I am a director at SANS Institute, and I've been in cybersecurity for a little over 20 years now. The first 10 years of my life were really on the technical side. I did a lot of deception, honeypot, cyber intelligence work. And in the past 10 years, I've also now been doing a lot of work on the human side. Excellent. Thank you, Lance, for that introduction. Lance is such a special guest for us today because he was originally one of the founders of the HoneyNet project. And we get so many questions about deception technology. Isn't that just a honeypot? So what I'd like to do first before we get into some of the compare contrast to the technology is tell us a little bit about the Honey, uh, HoneyNet project, what got you started in it, why you have such a passion for this technology. Sure, so the HoneyNet project started about 1999, 2000, a little over 20 years ago. And the whole idea that the problem we were attempting to solve is who's the bad guy? Why are they attacking us and how? The whole concept of know your enemy. And back then, that was really fundamentally new. Nobody was really doing this. So how do you learn? You can't go out and interview the bad guy. So that's where the whole concept of developing honeypots and honey nets and things along those lines were developed. And really, it was very simple back then. Nothing more than honeypots, honey nets of real operating systems put on the internet with certain technologies wrapped around it. Bad guys would come in, do all sorts of evil, evil stuff. We'd record, watch everything they do, derive a lot of cyber intelligence from them. Back then, it was really groundbreaking, but it also helped us gain a far better understanding of who the bad guy was. And you know, the big term nowadays would be TTPs. Yep, great. So. It was there, it's been around 20 years or so. What were some of the successes of that, that technology that you would point to? Well, the two big successes were first, it proved, hands down, the concept works. Put this stuff out there, it's very simple conceptually. Any interaction with it, you know it's a, a suspect, it's bad, but also it's tremendously valuable in the information you can learn. Um, attribution, TTPs, new tools, all sorts of intelligence on who that bad guy is, how they're operating, and what I feel most important, why? Really get into that motivation. So, great technology, great innovation. So, why did it go quiet? Why didn't it bust and boom into to the interest that we're seeing today with deception? What uh, absolutely. So, 20 years ago, the challenge we had was everything had to be crafted by hand and maintained. The whole reason the HoneyNet project was founded is because no one single person could do it all. We needed you know, intrusion detection technology, system hardening, analysts, linguists, data analysts. So what happened is a lot of customization, a lot of time to manage. It was just a lot of effort to deploy and maintain these systems. So it was great for research purposes, but it could not easily scale for the enterprise. Gotcha. So let's fast forward to today. Um, deception has evolved quite a bit, so can you talk a little bit about how things have changed, right? What's the difference between a honeypot and, and kind of today's modern deception or commercial grade deception, however you want to call it? Sir, so, so the first big thing is the technology. What would have taken weeks to deploy can now literally be deployed to the push of a button. The system learns your network, deploys lures and traps and honeypots and all sorts of other types of technologies automates the data collection, the data analysis. So literally what have taken me weeks 20 years ago can now be done with a simple push of the button. But the other big thing now too is it's now not just honeypots, but honey tokens, data systems, all sorts of other elements all put together to really enable you to simplify the whole detection and threat intelligence capabilities. I love it. That's fantastic. We love to hear that you love that. <laughs> so it, it, it has come a long way. Um, you know, what are some of the things that people are using this technology before? Mostly it was research back, yep. you know, you'd put something out there, see who was attacking uh, you, but now people are using it for really production level in network detection. Yep. Um, but what, what are they looking to find? What, what kind of use cases are they, they using it for? So that's one of the wonderful things about deception. So first of all, it's the simplicity of the concept. One of the biggest challenges most organizations deal with from a detection perspective is you're overwhelmed. Millions of logs means millions of false positives, all this data you have to dig through. The beauty of deception 
It's the whole idea. Any interaction with any of those systems is by default suspect. There's no looking for the needle in the haystack. It's all needles. So the first is really simplified detection. The second is threat intelligence. The whole idea of you can collect all this information. Where are they coming from? How they got in? What are they doing on the system? What are their tools? What do they do with the data they collect? So there's a tremendous amount of information you can also collect if you want to. Some organizations, detection is enough. Yeah. Some want to take it to the next level. Hey, what can I learn about the bad guy? And then if you have a truly mature program, you can start really messing with the bad guys, giving them bad information, messing up their world. They've always had the initiative. What I love about the whole idea of deception is you take the efforts of the bad guys and you turn it around against them. We're literally turning the tables on them. Fantastic, great answer. So, you, you know, as soon as people talk about mature infrastructure, people immediately trigger to, isn't this just for the bad guys, the people with, you know, very advanced security infrastructures and frameworks? Um, what are you seeing? I mean, is this appropriate for a smaller or mid-sized company or is it only for the biggest of the big? So what's great about it, once again, is the simplicity. So very mature organizations can use it and they tend to use it, like I said, beyond just detection and threat intelligence and threat hunting. But for even the more basic organizations, and I've always wondered about this, honeypots quite often in detection in uh, detection, deception in general makes detection so easy Maybe it's often one of the best places to start. You don't know what's happening in your network. Put a system, a honeypot, a deception device in that network, and boom, all these lights go on so it can greatly simplify the whole detection process. So absolutely, is it, right, is it, a, is it a solution for somebody just starting? Absolutely. This way you don't need a whole IDS team. Fantastic, great. Uh, there's, um more knowledge, I mean, RSA has got quite a bit of buzz about people hanging their shingle on deception technology. There's, um, you know, vendors like Ativo that provide a full platform, and there's others that are providing deception as just features within the platform. So how does somebody looking at this technology understand when they're hearing deception, maybe network, endpoint, application, data? How do you decipher and figure out what type of deception is best for you, given kind of all these different modulations of the technology? So that's a wonderful thing to ask. So first of all, in cybersecurity in general, never, never be afraid to ask, well, what's your definition of deception? Or what's your definition of artificial intelligence or insider threat? Everyone tends to have a different definition. So never feel bad and go, stop, what's your definition? Two, start with what are you attempting to achieve? Is it simplified detection? Is it threat hunting? Is it threat intelligence? Is it taking it to the high level and really messing with and interacting, interacting with those advanced attackers? So first, adopt, decide what is it you want to achieve and they'll go look to see who provides that solution in a very simplified format. Because once again, the real value of deception is simplicity. So whatever you're doing, you want to make sure it simplifies your architecture, your approach. We have enough complexity. <laughs> That's for sure. We sure do. So on the um, deception front, there's also a factor of, for deception to work, first you have to have a footprint. You need to be able to cover the attack surfaces, so you're where the attackers are likely going to go as they escalate their attack. But the second piece of it is, is a bit of a dialogue around does it look authentic and then the next level of it is not only is it authentic, but is it believable? Mm -hmm. And so there are lots of choices out there as far as somebody putting up just a straight emulated system and something that goes into you know, real operating systems applications and really mirror matches the production yep. environment. Does it, does it matter, part one, and part two, by using real operating systems and services, does this make it extremely complicated now um, for organizations to have to deploy and, and to manage? Sure, so the terminology you're talking for, we in the HoneyNet days would call low interaction and high interaction. Low interaction is emulated. The reason you would go with emulation, much easier to deploy. The software emulates services, emulates operating systems. That's excellent for detection with more simplified threats. Maybe malware, script kitties, yeah. automated attacks, things like that. It's like a radar detector. High interaction is what we would call a honey net, real operating systems. They traditionally took a lot more work, but far more information collection capability. You're not only um, detecting when they connect to the system, but they get on this, but how did they get on? Was it password credentials? Did they exploit a vulnerability? 
what do they do when they get on the system? What commands do they execute? What tools do they upload? What are they looking for? Where do they go once they're on that system? So first of all, low interaction or high interaction? Depends what you're trying to achieve. Very new, very simple, go with low interaction. But keep in mind, low interaction is not the solution you want if you're going to be dealing with more sophisticated threats, nation state, targeted. If you're going to be doing with uh, more targeted, more sophisticated, you're going to want to go with more high interaction. And the thing about honey nets, honey pots, and deception in general, in 20 years, I have never been disappointed. Doesn't matter where you're going to deploy them, you're going to learn something. Yep, yep. That's great perspective. And again, there are different use cases for the different forms of, of technology. Um, let's go to the part B of that question, which was around, if you go with a high interaction environment, a lot of people believe being able to manage all those operating systems and services is complicated. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can talk a little bit about how some of the machine and self-learning today has simplified the process of oh, preparing absolutely. and deploying. So first of all, that was the biggest holdback. 20 years ago, deploying these high interaction environments was extremely time consuming. First of all, you had to figure out, well, what do we want it to look like? Then build it, build the controls around it. How are we going to collect the data? How are we going to analyze the data? So now a lot of that is automated. So first of all, you know, what do I want? Do I want Windows, Linux, old days, Solaris? Do I want a networking device? Do I want an ICS environment, POS environment? Now the technology, push a button, listen, look at the network traffic. Ooh, let's learn what's on it. Let's replicate it, spin it up. Now with virtualization in cloud, it's all automated. It's all out there, collecting data, you're good to go. Okay. So that's the beauty, it's all automated. Yep, big, big, big easy button there now. <laughs> that is the biggest difference between today and 20 years ago. The concept is the same, the value is the same, but now the scalability is tremendously simplified. Excellent. So there's a lot of interest in deception technology, but there's also a lot of technologies that come in that, you know, when you look at fad versus fashion, you know, is deception something that's kind of interesting but then will be obsoleted fairly quickly or your vision for the future of deception technology is it is it here to stay or is this it's just absolutely a here to stay i believe um, don't forget i'm a huge fan um two reasons one the technology has made it simple so it can scale anybody can operate it two the threat environment is radically trained changed far more aggressive far more skilled far more motivated We've got to do something to change the table. Yeah, so the beauty of it is detection, threat intelligence, it simplifies it, but for those that want to take it to the next level, that can also help really change the table on the bad guys. Yeah, absolutely. So I know we're running out of time here, so any final words of wisdom, guidance that you would give to people looking at uh, putting deception technology into their uh, security stack? The big thing on deception and honeypots is, like I said, start with what is it you want to achieve. Most organizations start with detection because it is so simplified. Just put it out there. So that's what I recommend. If you're new with deception, start from the detection capability. As you get used to it, then you can take it to the next level, threat hunting, threat intelligence, and then finally to the next level where you're really interacting with the bad guy and if you want, really change the tables on them. Excellent. Well, Lance, I want to thank you for being with us here today. Uh, Lance has been very kind to be our guest speaker. He also has a blog on the Ativo Network's website. And uh, there's a lot of great information. Uh, definitely an expert in the uh, <laughs> deception environment. And so we appreciate uh, his uh, sharing his advice and guidance. So we want to thank you for tuning in today and wish you a wonderful day. All right, thank you.